This is my school project and I've done mine on RC cars. My inquiry question was how parts of an RC car work and I'm going to be researching and showing you how parts of an RC car work and some modifications and some other things too that I'm going to learn on, along the way. Hi, I'm Tom and this is my project and it's the first part and I'm going to be showing you the motors in this part and this was my first motor from my first RC car when I got when I was five and it's nitro then this is a cylinder head and this is a glow starter and um, this is how you ignite the fuel so you just put it in there and there's this little part that you put like that and then you push down and it ignites the fuel so the car starts and I'm going to show you what it looks like this is the fuel line where the fuel comes in and this is where the air comes air comes in and this is basically here so the um so the sand doesn't get in and it doesn't break the engine this is the carburetor and that's where the air comes in and this is the throttle when you go faster or slower it opens and closes so that's when you're going really fast and that's slower and when you just stop there there should be a little hole there and to make that bigger or smaller there's a little screw there bigger or smaller like that and you need the hole this probably the size about the corner of your credit this is the crankshaft and when this spins around the piston goes up and down compressing the fuel and the air which is a mixture and it explodes in there because it's really tight and that pushes it out and it goes through there and that's how the engine runs now I'm going to pull it apart and show you the full inside when the crankshaft spins around there's a little slot in it there and it opens and closes like that and that's get that's how the air goes in now I'm going to fully pull the crankshaft out this is what the piston looks like this is what the crankshaft looks like. There's a little hole. This is the crankshaft bearing. We took it out so we could get the crankshaft out to show you. So the crankshaft hooks there. And then when usually you've got a pull start like that and you will start pulling it like that. And that would start it because it would start spinning this and then that would get the pistons going up and down and the air will start coming in in the fuel. So when the new new fresh fuel stuff comes in, it pushes the exhaust out through this and the intake ports get the new stuff coming in and that just fits in there like so. When it spins around, the three claws grab onto the bell housing which spins it round and that's how your car runs and that's pretty much the whole engine it's engines you can modify and that they all look hunt well mainly different that was basically part one this is my first ever RC car I had it's electric it looks it's called Mad Hawk and it looks like something from Mad Max Fury Road or something like that and I've never broken this, apart from just then how I was holding it and I ripped the thing off. This is the first ever Nitro I've had. Everything on this is stock standard apart from the frame and the cylinder head. So everything else is the same. So this car is completely modded apart from some parts like the air cleaners, the wheels and the aerial um, and a couple of the other parts that are black. When you're talking about modding to go faster and you add something you also add a lot of weight onto it. It's about the ratio of power to weight so this isn't the fastest car and we could make it faster if this was plastic and it would be lighter for the car to push but it also wouldn't be able to hold the parts. Servos are little things inside the car like this that move the throttle and the steering and 
they can lift certain amount of weight and this one can lift about eight kilos so when you modify the servos it helps the steering so when you're in the stand and things and you hit things the wheels don't go all wonky and um, you can keep going and so you can take you can impact more harder things and these are some of them that we broke earlier okay this is a fail safe we used it in hydroplaning for the complete opposite of what you are meant to use it for you're meant to use it for so when your car loses signal it usually just goes absolutely berserk and drives all over the place but if you have one of these it will stop um, and it will turn the car off but in hydroplaning we wanted it to do the opposite so the car would keep going and that's what it did okay there was a couple of quick mods from from part two two most common batteries are nickel metal hydrite and lithium polymer which everyone calls lipos we have heaps of lipos our shed caught fire from a lipo the danger with them is if you like hit them hard or break them and things they start to release flammable gases and that's why we put them in this bag why we charge and things like that so there's no fires this charger runs on the lead acid batteries this charger runs on power it has power cord there okay this is a christmas tree um we use it to charge the battery so you just plug it in to that port those ports there and um you charge your batteries and we also hang them up around the house and we get presents under them at Christmas no we don't but I wish we did um this is the charger running if you wanted to charge your battery you would press start and it would start charging even though there's nothing in there well this charger it monitors the cells of the lithium polo battery and so you type this well you just press the cells in here and then it will monitor the cells and that's why it's really important to have uh, that's why it's really important oh it, this is really important so the lithium poly polymer batteries don't catch fire okay you can set a model to some batteries so the computer remembers how how much charge them and things next time that's basically that charger this charger is a lot different i think well it's an older charger and we usually use this one for non-lithium polymer batteries so for example this one you would just put it into the christmas tree like that and plug it in like that um, yes, that is how we get presents at Christmas. We, we leave trees hang like this up around Christmas and then when we wake up we find batteries attached to them. That's why we have a stack load of batteries. Not really. This is the wheel section. The four main wheels are drift, road, sand and grass. Okay, these are drift. They're for drift cars and they just, they have absolutely no grip and so they're always slipping but you can do some really nice turns and things with them so I quite like these ones these are slicks they're for the X01 and they're road tires um, usually if you have slicks you only use them on road this is a road tire but you can also use it in sand and um, we have these are from the basher also fit a lot of other cars these are sand paddles with these it's easier to grip the sand and it's also better to grip the water but because we use these for hydroplaning now these are all terrain tires you can use them for anything but drifts um these ones pop easy which well that's something i've found out because every time we're using these i always pop one these are also all terrains and they're massive. These are pinwheel tires. They come in all sizes. Pinwheel tires, their name kind of re 
presents the tyres because it looks like they've got pins in them. They're also all trains. These are sand tyres. Um, they're not like sand paddles, but they're usually for the front. So that would be a car. These are grass and road tyres. Um, they're usually for, well, they're mainly for all terrains, but they're better on grass and road. These are one fifth scale all terrains. They're massive, bigger than my hand. And they're for the HPI, no, 5SC, HPI Racing. Now that was the tyre section. Okay now that was my project and I've learned heaps and now I'm going to see what you guys have learned.